So Santa Cruz Batman here. And uh, so I just dropped uh, uh, the origins of Santa Cruz Batman part one uh, yesterday. And so here's part two. And I've been trying to think, you know, this is a long story. So um, after part one, I think the most influential thing that really kind of steered me towards doing this was, um, was Michael Stoops. Michael Stoops was a homeless advocate who operated in the Portland, Oregon area. In the late 60s, 70s, and when I met him was 1982. And, and it was interesting because it was career day. I think I was a senior, and I can't remember if it was before or after the Christmas holiday, but I think it was, it might have been after, so it might have been in 1983. Career day, you know, your typical people come in, data processing, firemen, uh, you know, program manager, insurance salesman. Uh, so Michael Stoops came to Beaverton High School on that career day, and he brought with him two homeless people. These were older gentlemen. They had beards. They looked like they had been around a while. To me, they looked like ancient, like 65, but they may have been in who knows in their 50s. And they were um, examples of survivors on the street of Portland, and they were incredibly intelligent people. So here it was, you know, everyone was, was thinking it was a joke, career day, and he's bringing two homeless people. But I just remember Michael, just, he was, he was so intense uh, it kind of reminds me of Steve Prefontaine a little bit. His gaze and his, his manner of talking to you just grabbed your attention. I thought he was one of the smartest people in Portland. And he looked around this room because it was being held in, in, in a, it was very popular. Career day, that sounds like a, a hoot. Let's go see uh, this guy who's going to bring two homeless people. And he kind of opened up, looking across the whole audience of, I, I think there was over 100, maybe 150 of us crammed in the, the band, the band room. And he says, you know, you may not know it, but I'm looking out here and at least two or three of you in the future are going to be homeless. And so you might want to pay attention. That shut the audience up a little bit. But it made an impression on me, and so... You know, I was into Michael Stoops because I'd seen him on the local news, and the more I found out about him, you know, he has a Quaker past, but he wore these Chuck Taylors, and he had this just this fierce mind trap, you know, steel trap of a mind, and and the guy worked tirelessly for homeless rights, largely in the Portland area, Burnside, you know, Baloney Joe's back in those days, uh, but then he went on to Washington D.C. He founded the National Coalition of the Homeless, of which I belong. And unfortunately, uh, I, you know, the last time I, I uh, communicated with, with Michael, it must have been a month or two before he passed in May of 2015. What a talent. Uh, and so that's, that's the end of part two. Michael Stoops, God rest his soul, of Portland, Oregon. Uh, I encourage you to Google him. He was a fantastic human being, and he worked with a couple other fantastic human beings. Portland in those years was really, you know, setting the standard just like we did for you know with neil goldspit despite his controversy and trimet setting the standard for um for homeless programs uh, and so that's that's the end of part two michael stoops really inspired me like this guy is super smart and no one else is doing this and this he made an impression i got my v150 set up and uh so you know when they come driving by those guys, uh, for all they know, it's it's an actual official. And I got through that roadblock by just saying, hey, there's an oil fire. It's pretty easy to get around these guys if you just... Uh... It's a little weird coming back to the Pacific Northwest. Um, it's just you for, kind of forget how granola it is. 503-308-4854. Doggone Sparter. That's a life coach for your dog, you know.